Old stereotypes about sex-crazed sailors have come back to haunt the Navy. Charges of sexual harassment by women who say they were manhandled at a gathering of Navy flyers. It was called the worst case of sexual harassment in the Navy's history. More than 100 Top Gun pilots accused of conduct unbecoming officers and gentlemen. I squatted down to break his, his hold and bit him. Somebody reached between my knees and tried to grab my panties. Dozens of women, including Navy officers, were assaulted at a Las Vegas hotel where an aviators convention called Tailhook was meeting. Behind the specific assault lies a macho culture which belittles women. Tailhook made public how hostile to women the military was and led to promises of culture change. Denying the dignity and worth of other individuals will not be tolerated. But has the so-called zero tolerance policy worked? Are military women better off today than 20 years ago? Nineteen ninety one. The U.S. launches a ground and air war in the Persian Gulf. Among the troops are forty thousand American women, and not all the men like the idea. No, I don't know exactly how these women are gonna handle this. I think this should be a you know a man's war here. By law, women were not allowed in ground combat or fighter jets or combat ships. But many coveted those jobs, including Navy Lieutenant Paula Coughlin. I grew up in a Navy family where um, we all understood you could do whatever you wanted to do in life. You just had to be hardworking and set your mind to it. Coughlin wanted to be an aviator, like her father. But as a woman, she was allowed to fly only support aircraft, like helicopters. She excelled and landed a plum job as an admiral's aide. I was really confident that I would have a pretty long and successful career. It was in the company of her boss that Coughlin attended the Tailhook Convention in September 1991. She remembers this panel discussion, where the Navy brass was asked if women would ever be allowed to fly fighter jets like the men. I was wondering, sir, when you plan to implement that and if it's going to be soon. The male pilots in the audience started jeering even before they heard the answer. By not condemning the outburst, Coughlin believes the Admiral sent an ominous message. Women are second-class citizens, and whether they can fly a jet or not, let's party and have at it. And that's really how it all kind of played out. It all played out on the hotel's third floor, where convention after parties turned ugly. Drunken aviators roamed the halls, exposing their genitals and attacking unsuspecting Navy and civilian women. When Lieutenant Coughlin entered this corridor, packed with partiers, a crowd of male aviators surrounded her and pounced. People were actually closing in and um, trying to pull my clothes off. Um, I got knocked to the floor, and I kicked, and I punched, and I actually bit somebody who was reaching down my blouse. She eventually escaped and later told her boss, Admiral John Snyder, about the incident. He promised to report it. Coughlin remembers him saying something else, something Snyder denies. He told me, that's what you get when you go down a hallway full of drunk aviators. That's what you get. I chose to meet with her because I was appalled that nobody on, on behalf of the Navy had apologized, you know, to Paula and said, I am sorry this occurred. This is not Barbara Pope was then the Navy's first female assistant secretary. She says from the start of the tailhook investigation, the Navy's top men weren't taking what happened seriously. They thought it was misbehavior, you know, some behavior that got out of hand and they missed assault. Uh, you know, my point was that assault is, is criminal. You know, there's no acceptable assault. If you are manhandled against your will, it's assault. Seven months after Tailhook, the Navy issued its report. 1,500 officers were questioned, but only two were named as suspects because most of the Navy men involved refused to cooperate. The investigation was led by Admiral Duvall Mac Williams. I said to Mac, I'm not buying that nobody's talking. And um, Admiral Williams had said, well, you know, some of these women were kind of bringing it on themselves, and that started my outrage, my indignation. And I said, nobody brings assault on themselves. And he said, men and women cannot work together. It all comes down to sex. 
This is the man who was in charge of the investigation. In the wake of an apparent whitewash, Paula Coughlin took a radical step. Until one woman came forward and said, enough, there was a very good chance it was going to be covered up. Dressed in her uniform, Coughlin went on national television to demand that the men who had attacked her at Tailhook be brought to justice. Not every man in the Navy behaves like that. But those who did shouldn't remain in the Navy or the Marine Corps. Coughlin's media appearances transformed Tailhook from a Navy embarrassment to a national scandal. The Secretary of the Navy was forced to resign, and Congress temporarily froze 4,500 Navy promotions. Sexual harassment will not be tolerated, and those who don't get the message will be driven from our ranks. The new Navy Secretary, Sean O'Keefe, instituted gender sensitivity classes, closed officers' drinking clubs, and set up a commission to study whether women should be allowed to serve on combat ships and planes. The changes made Paula Coughlin a hero to many women, but a pariah in the Navy. I had to walk into a room full of naval aviators that felt like I had betrayed their tribe. I had to listen to a live talk show about how I had ruined the Navy and what a slut I was. I just was treading water and trying not to kill myself. What really happened at the Tailhook Convention finally emerged in a blistering Pentagon report, 90 victims in all, 140 officers facing possible punishment. But in the end, while dozens of military careers were damaged, no one was criminally prosecuted. And with that, Paula Coughlin quit the Navy. It's been more than four years since the infamous Tailhook incident. Where... Tailhook exposed the sexual assault problem in the military, but the reforms did not end it. In 1996, a rape ring was uncovered at an army base. In 2003, rampant sexual abuse at the Air Force Academy. And by 2008... Women serving in the U.S. military today are more likely to be raped by a fellow soldier than killed by enemy fire in Iraq. I deeply regret that such crimes occur in the U.S. military. Former Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta apologized for what's been called the military's silent epidemic. About 3,400 sexual assaults were reported in 2012, but the Pentagon estimates 26,000 actually took place. What's more, the officer in charge of the Air Force's sexual assault prevention program was just arrested and charged with sexual battery, further pushing the issue into the spotlight. So, bottom line is, I have no tolerance for this. Navy Petty Officer Jenny McClendon was shocked at what she says she faced a decade after Tailhook. I presumed that I was going to join a group of people who were my comrades. When I got to the ship, it was a while before, it was probably a couple of months before we went from harassment to, to the groping. And the groping uh, eventually culminated in several physical assaults and a, a few rapes. Women stand a one in five chance of being assaulted during their military service. But within the Pentagon's data is this startling fact. More than half of the sexual assault victims each year are men. Rape is a crime about power and control. The military is very much about power and control. Navy Petty Officer Brian Lewis says he was raped by a superior officer at knife point on a submarine base. He says he told his command about the rape but men rarely do. A lot of it has to do with gender norms, that men cannot be victims, that you're serving in the military and you're able to defend yourself against this aggression. Uh, and a lot of it is just, uh, a lot of it is shame at having had this happen. Lewis says his case was never investigated, and Jenny McClendon says hers was mishandled, resulting in a lack of evidence, and eventually dropped. I was given a general discharge for a person. Lewis told Congress this year that he was retaliated against and discharged with a diagnosis of personality disorder, something he says happens to many sexual assault victims. I'm here today because I am not alone. My story is all too common. It's like seeing um, America's youth and the way that I used to be so completely virtuously enamored with the idea of serving your country and then being so desperately betrayed. Paula Coughlin, who had married, started a business, and put Tailhook behind her, felt compelled to step forward again. 
We represent over 500,000 veterans. She now represents Protect Our Defenders, an organization which pressured Congress to hold hearings on another sex scandal, in which Air Force instructors are accused of raping or sexually mistreating at least 58 female recruits. We have been trying a number of programs, a number of training activities, a number of educational initiatives. While some of them may be successful, they may be helping the problem, we're certainly not reversing the trend in a dramatic way. And Paula Coughlin has an idea why. I think that prosecuting rapists in the military is pretty vital to eradicating rapists in the military. And I know that sounds almost remedial, but it's what's not happening. Someone who commits a criminal offense in the military, like driving drunk or doing drugs or stealing hand grenades, boom, they go to jail. They get kicked out really quickly. But if you rape a woman or you assault a man, you, oh, wait a minute, you're okay. The Department of Defense insists it prosecutes every case where sufficient evidence exists. But still, only 9% of assault cases investigated in 2012 ended in convictions. How many of you were raped while you were serving your country? How many of your assailants served prison time for your rape? Despite the grim statistics, former Navy official Barbara Pope says tailhook led to fundamental changes. Two years after the scandal, the Navy and Air Force opened most combat jobs to women. And in 2013, women got the go-ahead to serve in ground combat. Pope says credit for much of that goes to Paula Coughlin and Tailhook. It forced the Department of Defense to look at, could women fly? Could women be commanding officers of warships? And so the Navy will be forever indebted to her for, you know, forcing those changes. I mean, sometimes you have to have a crisis to, to speed up change. And Tailhook was that. For a long time, I, I said I was in the hallway, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I thought that for, I don't know, 10, 10 years at least. And then I started considering that maybe I was in the right place at the right time. Somebody had to be there. Somebody had to be the one to start the ball rolling. <laughs> 